And we are live. Yay! Hello, hello, Facebook world. Welcome. We are so excited for you to join us today. So let's do some quick inter introductions and then we'll talk about, you know, why the heck we're doing this live right now. So my name is Krista Kathleen and I'm a life and business coach and hypnotherapist and co-founder of Fearless Public Speaking with Monica Hutchinson here. And Monica, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I am, as Krista said, Monica Hutchinson, and I am a real talk and public speaking coach and also co-founder of Fearless Public Speaking and super psyched to be here today. And we have our lovely guest, Erin. Tell us who you are. Hey, I'm Erin Moynihan, Joy Coach, and I'm also a yoga therapist and aquatic therapist. Hey. Wow. So many cool titles we all have. I know. <laughs> <laughs> So just to give you all a little bit of a background, Monica and I, our business model is every month we host these online virtual workshops for business owners with a message. And last month we did a workshop that was called, what was it called? Lead your first virtual workshop or yeah. something along those okay. lines. Um, yeah, we we're basically helping women to create their first virtual workshops because we get a lot of requests for that. And Erin attended our workshop. And then and afterwards, what we do is we always award additional one on one assessment calls with the women who attend to help them implement the material further and see if you know they want to continue working with us on a deeper level. And we can talk about that later today. And Aaron won one of those assessments. And we thought it was, usually we would do these assessments, obviously just the three of us, but we thought it would be really cool to invite all of you into the behind the scenes so you can see how Monica and I work with women and just to see kind of what, you know, coaching and mentoring looks like as you're building and growing a business. So that's our purpose for today. Monica, was there anything you wanted to add before we get started? Uh, just that like virtual programs and workshops and all of that, it's such a hot topic right now, especially since so many of us have mm -hmm. online businesses. And I, I was in the world of corporate training for about seven years. And I know that people get really nervous about like talking to a screen and feeling like they're not there in community with other people. And Chris and I have found exactly the opposite. It's actually sometimes even more powerful to get in this virtual space with other people and come together together in community from all over the world and especially when you can see each other's faces but even if you can't having that community and that support support creates a different energy than than what you might get just you know one-on-one one-on-one -on -one. One -on -one is great Chris and I love one-on-one -on -one as well and having the group together in community uh, is so important to us and that's why we have been just really focusing lately on helping our clients create virtual workshops and uh, group programs and all that kind of stuff so happy to be here. Totally. Okay. So Aaron, I would love to hear an update from you as to, you know, what is it that you walked away with from attending the workshop last night or last month? And then where are you <laughs> at right now with creating your first virtual workshop? Um, so it's been a crazy week. Um, we're in Mercury retrograde, but I'm not going to blame anything on that. <laughs> And I came into this week with like a bang, gung ho. Um, you had done a live video talking about focusing on one thing for the week. And so my focus was this call and what my plan was for the workshop. So from the previous virtual workshop um, was so fantastic because I, you guys taught me that it can be paid, it could be free, um, it can be live, it can be not live, that's okay too. Um, you, there's so many different ways that you can put it out there, um, you know, through different social media outlets. And um, it kind of just, it really just gave me the, con not just, it gave me confidence um, to do, uh, I, I, my goal was like, oh, I'm, I've got one set right here, I'm gonna do it on my birthday, um, I'm doing a free, um, workshop on how to read tarot cards for yourself. And I'm super excited <laughs> about that. And um, then Monday came along and I was ready and I was taking notes and got all my study, getting my focus for the week. And um, that's not it. That's not what I, I mean. I'm still going to do that one on my birthday, but today is going to be different topic, um, different focus. Um, so I'm excited to get into that. 
I love that idea. Of, yeah, the reading the tarot cards. And yeah, I know you've done a session for me when we were in Florida at the retreat you were in, and for Monica as well. And you're really talented at that. So thank you. And, and I've done that actually online before for the new and the full moon. I've done Oracle card readings and it's everybody wants it. It's such a popular thing to do. So I love And everybody it. could do it. So yeah. So great idea, but okay. So you said, but we're not focusing on that today. So it sounds like you have another idea for a work. No. Yeah, I had a huge download and um, I did a, um, a budget analysis uh, with uh, my friend Molly um, and we talked about money and what I wanted to earn for the year. And after that call, I sat down in my notebook and I decided to write out for every month what I wanted to make. What, and I decided instead of saying the word earn, I'm going to say blessed with. Mm -hmm. And so I went through my months for 2020 and put each month of how much I want to be blessed with, mm -hmm. except I didn't put January. I wanted to actually calculate January out. What did I, what was I actually blessed with? And just a side note, um, I've been without a full-time job um, for almost, we're going on five months now. <laughs> and so everything that has supported me has been through manifesting universe gifts, love, you name it. Um, it's, it really has been manifesting work. So I sat down and, and I calculated out January and you guys are not going to believe this. It, it, I mean, it's just phenomenal to me. I said, Oh my God, for three days in, in a row, I was blessed with $7,700. Um, and not just cash, but like, paid bills, gifts, um, the retreat I was gifted. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a huge number for somebody who didn't work a full time or even really part time. Um, that's big. And that changed my entire number system for the rest of the year because for February, I had only written down $6,000. And I was like, I've already surpassed that. So um, I was like, okay. This is change. This is big. I need to get this message out here. I've I really am understanding manifesting on a different level, and that's what I decided I'm going to base this workshop on. Ooh. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so a manifesting workshop. You're going to use your own story as a testimonial, which you know that is what Monica and I are all about. Is using your own experiences and teaching others how to benefit off of that. So this is perfect. Yes. Love thank it. you. Thank you. Love it. So when is the date of this next workshop going to be? Ah, that was on your last uh, video we just did. I decided April 1st and it's not going to be an April Fool's. And I picked that for a reason because that day feels very frivolous for people. So um, energies are high and mm -hmm. that's where I want people to be when they watch the video is high energy um, mm -hmm. excitement um, on their toes. What's coming next? What's she going to say next? Um, so yeah, so April, April 1st, I'll be launching this program that we talked about today. Perfect. And I just, for everyone watching live right now too, I want to show you the worksheet that we created for the members and we're taking <coughs> through this today too. So I'm just going to do a quick share screen so you can all be on the same page as me and then we'll go back. You get to see all my millions of tabs. This is real entrepreneur life right here, guys. This is how it works. Okay, so we use, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but my favorite program for creating worksheets is Canva, and there's a free version and a paid version. The paid version's only like $12.95 each month. Hey, Krista? Yeah. Can you make it 100% maybe? I think it might just show up a little bit easier on the screen over mm -hmm. on that right-hand side down at the bottom. Right-hand, oh. So 75 right now, yeah. yeah. Yes. Is that better? Perfect. Much better. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So when Monica and I lead our monthly workshops every month, we create these beautiful branded downloadable worksheets for all of our members attending. So Aaron got access to this. So the first question we've already pretty much gone on, uh, we went through with Aaron. She wants to do a manifesting workshop. So you decide on a topic. The next is picking a date and time. So I'm, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to stop sharing here in a minute, but I just want to show you all what this looks like is we're going to take her through all these steps today. And again, you get access to these pretty worksheets when you attend our workshop. So we really like to make things easy and actionable and step by step. 
because it's so easy to get overwhelmed and lost in the details. So that's why we do things like this. And again, Canva is such a great program to design your worksheet. So, okay, I'm gonna switch on over again. So we can focus on our date and time. Back to my notes. Okay, so April 1st, and what's the time gonna be for that, Erin? Oh, I think we lost her. Oh, hopefully she'll come back here in just a minute. Bummer. Yay for technology and Mercury Retrograde. If anyone doesn't know what Mercury Retrograde is, Erin had already previously mentioned it, but it's basically where technology goes to shit and things like this happen. I think it has to do with Mercury being closer to Earth, isn't it? What it means, I, I can't ever remember. Erin and I had a whole conversation about Mercury Retrograde. I was talking to my mom about it yesterday, how like, I feel like this has to have been a thing for years, and yet now all of a sudden everyone is in tune with it, which kind of makes me laugh. Uh, yep, she said her internet just rebooted. She'll be back on in a second. So sorry. All good. You know what? This also goes to show all of you that when technology problems happen, you just keep going. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Um, it will of, happen when yeah. you do when you have an online business, and if you're doing like a one to one client call or a group call there is going to be all kinds of stuff happen and you can't get all flustered and freaked out and you got to kind of just like right it's kind of like if the airplane's going down and everyone's looking at the flight attendant you got to keep this like cool calm collected face and be like it's okay we got this and here she is i don't know why my internet was like oh bye oh hi i'm back on <laughs> <laughs> it's okay if it does it again just i'll be back <laughs> yes we will trust that Weird. Okay, just Mercury retrograde, chalking it up to communication errors. <laughs> All right, so okay. April 1st, and what time were you gonna do? I think she doesn't wanna answer the question about what time it's gonna be because that's the second time that it's frozen. Oh my gosh, stop! That's my, question. my stupid computer keeps like doing spinning things. I'm like, stop, so I'm I think your computer, I was just telling Chris that your computer doesn't want you to commit to a time because it's the second time she's asked that question and you froze it. It's because it's gonna be April Fool's. <laughs> it's just preparing you for it. I love doing um, evening times for me. I'm always, in, so seven o'clock, I'm on the East Coast. So seven o'clock East Coast time will be my time. Perfect. And that's really important too, is to pick a time that is good for you energetically. For me, I am not an afternoon person. So I really try to avoid doing like programs or workshops in the afternoon. So I love that Erin already knows that 7 p.m. is a good time for her. And then how long are you thinking you want the workshop to be, Erin? I'm thinking I want it to be about an hour long, I'm guessing. And how many people do you, are you planning on attending? Um, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't thought about that part yet. Can I jump in on this one? Yep, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, Aaron, do you plan to have this workshop be more interactive or is it mostly going to be informational? I was kind of hoping to make it more informational okay. um, instead of interactive. Okay. What's your rationale behind that or what's your thought process? Um, I think what I have to say um, doesn't have a lot of room for feedback when I'm giving the information, um, uh, but I could. But it's something that can be followed by like on a work like on a worksheet. So what I'm hoping is that I can use it to. So it doesn't have to seem like a like. So anybody could use it at any time. Not you can come sign back on, pay for the workshop later on. And I, you can watch the video and follow along with the worksheet. So there isn't um, any interference in that. Does that make sense? Okay. Are you open to at least some interaction within it? Um, I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm open here, to anything. <laughs> I'm not, here's, I'm not well, yeah. anything. <laughs> and here, here's why, right? Because, and this just com comes from being a trainer for seven years also. And it's funny because I've gone back, back and forth with Krista on this with our videos too. It's like, do we provide all the information up front, especially if we want to make it repurposable because maybe we don't want people to have to like watch all the coaching and stuff that takes place. But I would encourage you to just think about, and that's something we can talk about later on too, but where can you at least engage with them in the session to keep them um, focused on what you're doing? Because 
when we just provide information to people, it's really easy, especially in an electronic um, kind of setting for them to yeah. tune out and be clicking 15 different places. So we can look at different ways for engagement um, to help with that too. But why mainly back to the question at hand, why I'm asking is because um, I think an hour is great if you're, if it's going to be minimal interaction. Um, something Chris and I have talked about before with like number of people for it is if you are not super comfortable with facilitating workshops yet, especially with technology, um, like four to six is a good starting point. We usually, if it's going to have um, element of interaction, wouldn't go above 12 for the live component. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an ICF um, mm -hmm. recommendation as well, International Coaching Federation. But I found it with virtual settings as well that like, it's hard to to focus on all the people there if you get above that. And then if you want to go send it to people after, like, you know, millions of people watch it whenever you want. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to throw that in to think about too. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Another thing too. So the workshop that we just did last night, we had the, it was two hours and we had the first hour be strictly informational and then we had the second hour be interaction. Like that's where people did questions and we did coaching. And so what I'm thinking, Erin, for you is maybe doing like a similar format and doing it from seven to nine. Okay. The first hour, maybe you can teach, you know, do introductions, teach all about manifesting and how that looks and then have that time open at the end for people to interact. And is what we got feedback and we found out that people love the interaction and the coaching the best. Yeah, I like that. That sounds really good. Yeah. Yeah. And and um, that allows for two things, right? You can cut your recording off yep. when you're done giving info if you want, and then you've okay. got that to go repurpose. The second piece is, Erin, you're doing something that you're teaching people how to do. So it could either end up being you doing a reading to show as an example, or it could be, okay, I just showed you how to do this. Who wants to work with me on trying this out for themselves? Right. You know, so there could be different ways that you play with that on what that interaction looks like. Absolutely. Taking notes too. Yeah. Cool. And so see, this is why we had to ask you all these questions before we got really clear on the time, because if it's going to be like a true workshop, usually 60 minutes isn't going to be long enough. So okay. I agree with what Monica said. Yeah. Especially if you want to repurpose this video and, you know, using your sales funnel or on a podcast or YouTube, you can always cut it off after the hour mark. And then people don't have to watch the, the questions. They just get the strict information. Got it. And I still can have like live stream of chat. Like if I'm using zoom or whatever, right. To answer questions. Yes. People. Okay. Yep. And with, with zoom, that is the greatest interaction tool. Zoom is limited with how much interaction you can do. There are some additional things I haven't played with yet, but the chat box is the easiest place and it's really easy to throw questions and just direct people like type in the chat if you think this or ask me a question or whatever it is and then you can manage that as you go. Awesome, I can do that. Yep, Zoom is the way to go. And just for everyone watching us live right now, if you're not familiar with the Zoom platform, we're not, we're using StreamYard, but we used to use Zoom to live stream. This is just a little bit better. But for workshops, Zoom is the best. You can use a free version if it's just you and one other person. If it's going to be a group, then you are going to have to get the paid version if you want to do calls beyond 45 minutes. And the paid version, I believe, is about $14 a month. I know groans. It's like oh, another expense for your business. But at the end of the day, you do have to remember when you're setting up an online coaching business, there is going to be some expenses. And really, at the end of the day, the overhead is really low compared to if you're setting up a brick and mortar workshop. Think about how much that would cost. So I always hear people complain. Are you kidding me? Another subscription I have to pay for. But really, it's we're so lucky as online coaches that it's so easy and cheap and affordable to get this business started. So just wanted to throw that in there. Okay. So Aaron, is this workshop going to be paid or is it going to be free? I want this one to be paid. Okay. Cool. <laughs> that was my first. <laughs> ah! no. I'm not going to just give it away. Okay. No, no, this is, this isn't. Yeah. This is my paid one. The tarot card is going to be my free one. Okay. This one's going to be my paid one. Love it. 
And yeah, I think it's great to have free things in your business and to have paid things in your business. And that's a part of your sales funnel. Um, so how much do you want to charge for this workshop? I want to charge $35. Okay. Sounds great. So another reason why I ask is if it's, there's two things. So you have to have a way for people to sign up. And what we've been using for when it's a paid, you can use it if it's free or paid, but Eventbrite is really yes. great. Have you used Eventbrite before, Erin? Not for myself, but I've used it to like um, get tickets and things like that and, and through other events and stuff. But I've never like set myself up on it. So this will be it's easy and it's free too. And just something to point out for everyone, you know, just like any platform, um, they do charge fees, but they take it out of whatever your final cost is. Um, so yeah, you, you can play with it. It's very, very easy to set up. Yeah. And I want to show everyone what our event bright invitation looked like from yesterday. Hold on. I'm pulling it up right now. By the That's way, as Chris, as Chris is pulling it up too, I am running a ladies night tonight at my house, a paid ladies night. And I set that up there too. And it's kind of nice, even if you're doing in-person events, because I don't know about all of you, but worrying about collecting money in person doesn't feel so much fun to me. And it's more of a commitment if people go and they take care of the cost up front, it's more of a commitment for them to show up to whatever it is that you're hosting in person or online. So you can use this for any event that you're hosting where you're collecting funds. Totally. Yep. Okay. Let me show you all what this looks like. Does that look good on your, both of your ends? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So as you can see, we created a pretty graphic in Canva here and it looks really professional and uh, guys we're going to throw you a shocker here monica and i do not have a website yet for our company i know right <laughs> you can, it's crazy you can make money and you can start hosting group programs and workshops without a website i know big mind fuck, but it is possible <laughs> <laughs> we're working oh, wow. We're working on a website as we speak, but um, so we just wanted to show you like there's so many options here to have things that look professional. You can have your brand and um, Eventbrite is great for this. So, you know, you share this link with people and they come here and it gives them the information, the date and the time. And then, you know, we have some copy here. I always recommend to address pain points here in the description. So our pain point, have you been creating a group program in your head for a while now, but something just keeps getting in the way of actually making it happen. And then we turn into Pleasure Island. We show them what's possible here. It's time to unleash your brilliant ideas and put them into action so you can use your unique gifts to help people and start getting paid to do the work your soul is craving right now. And then we like to put, this is what you're gonna learn in the workshop. And you put like three to five bullet points if you have any bonuses and then the price. And then we always do a giveaway at the end because that's a little secret that we have is people love free giveaways, who doesn't? And we always like to give away female inspired business books and people will stay more towards the end if they know there's gonna be a giveaway. So yeah, this is a really great option for you, Erin, to use this. And it even if it was free, you could do this for your tarot as well. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be paid, but if you want to be paid, it's... And then here's the nice little... We don't ever do refunds, so I don't recommend to do um, refunds. And you can have that refund policy right there. Okay. I just want to say hi to Terry Lynn Moore, who's watching, and Sophia, and I'm not sure who else is with us, but just hello to everyone that's dropping comments, and we're so happy to have you here. Also, too, you all want to be building your list, your email list, as you're doing these events, because, right, you want people to continue to follow you and to stay updated, and so you can put some language on when people register, I think, with us and it's in Eventbrite. And when they register, they get like a confirmation email. And we have like a little clause that basically says, by signing up for this workshop, you're gonna be added to our email list and you're welcome to unsubscribe at any time. But again, just getting that permission and then we manually go in and add people um, to the email list as well. And so that's kind of a little tip of 
how to start growing your list. And, and I reckon we use ConvertKit. I, I love ConvertKit. Usually the two that most people will choose is either MailChimp or ConvertKit. I got kicked out of MailChimp because I used the word fuck in a subject <laughs> line one. So if you're going to swear a lot, you might want to use ConvertKit. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. And I have I have that written down too from the last workshop we were in too. So. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, I would recommend getting your list started sooner rather than later. Um, don't be like me and like I went back and forth for years. Like, should I do a list? Should I not? And then by the time I decided, I'm like, I wish I would have started this years ago. It's not as complicated as you think, and it's really valuable. It's it's like truly one of the only things that you'll own in your business because we don't own any of our social media platforms and you can lose every, like if they would decide to shut down Facebook or Instagram, you would lose everything. Um, but you, you don't lose your list because you own your email list. Yes. Cool. Okay. All right. A lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> always, always. Okay, so now we need to talk about sharing your event everywhere. So we need to create a little simple and easy marketing plan. And this is kind of where a lot of women start to freak <clears throat> out. So we want to just, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, we just want to like really quickly, Erin, set up a really, you know, easy plan for you of like, once you get this event set up on event right like, you know like where is it exactly you're going to be sharing and telling people about it because if you don't tell anyone about your work yeah. <laughs> yes so tell me about some places already either online or in person where you think you would want to share your workshop with others um obviously facebook because right now that's my biggest so i mean that's my biggest social media platform yeah. um even my um, Instagram, everybody who's on my Instagram is on my, <laughs> is already on my Facebook. So even though I'll probably share it both anyways, just to have it out there, you never know where it could be shared. Um, those are my top two right now. I have my website, but again, I'd have to have people directed to my website first. So how if people aren't already being directed to that, they're probably not going to see it there, I guess. Um, but those are my only two ideas. Okay, so we have Facebook, Instagram, and websites. So perfect, let's start there. So tell me about with Facebook, like how are you already showing up on Facebook? Is it your personal page? Is it a Facebook group, someone else's Facebook group, a business page? Right now, um, I, I my page is personal. So I haven't created a business page uh, yet. I'm working on that. Um, that was a confidence thing that wasn't even anything technical and it's really no big deal. So, um, I just need to put that out there and get that done this weekend, put that on my list. Uh, so I guess, I don't know. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, perfectly. So let me show you the two things that Monica and I do for, to advertise our workshops that works really well on Facebook. So I'm going to do another share screen here. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so here's an example of if you do well. So here, I would actually I would recommend creating a cover photo for your personal page. Okay. And then just use the same exact graphic that you're gonna you're gonna design one graphic and just use it everywhere. Use it on Eventbrite, and I'll show you some other places. And the cool thing here is when people click on this, you're gonna put your link to register and your copy over here as well. Okay. So that's a little trick that, and sometimes on, if you wanna create something specifically for a Facebook cover photo, you can even say click here to enroll to let them know to click. I probably actually will do that for the next one. Awesome. And then, oh, there we are, hi, okay. So there's two different ways you can do this, Erin. You can do, so we call this content marketing. You can do a live, and I know that you're really good and enjoying speaking, so I'm gonna encourage you to do as many Facebook lives as possible. Okay. And you can pick 
like a topic that you think is appropriate that would draw in your audience and that could lead into a beautiful call to action or invitation to your workshop. Okay. So that's what I did here. I went live yesterday. I talked about how to overcome the fear of rejection with sales. And then at the end of this video, I told people, hey, I have this amazing workshop coming up. You should join. Link is in the comments to sign up. And then that's where we put that link. You're basically going to share this link everywhere that you can. Okay. And then also, if you want to write, you can, again, this is my, I prefer to go live. That's my number one. Um, writing is my second choice, but you can, again, do a little bit of some content marketing here, tell people what's in the workshop, use the photo, and then do that. So that's another option. And then I want to show you the other thing that worked really well. Um, let's see, hopefully it's still up. So creating a Facebook event has been actually the thing that's been the most successful for Monica and I. So I would highly recommend, Aaron, for you to create a Facebook event. It's really easy. It shouldn't take more than like 15, 20 minutes. Okay. And again, you would just use the same graphic. You're just pretty much using the same information over and over again. And then you can invite all of your friends here. Again, put your link here. And then you can keep your audience updated as well. So people will ask questions in here. And the question that you're going to get asked the most is, is there a replay? It, like, it's crazy how many people want to know. Because, you know, a lot of people can't attend live. So yeah, I, always, I didn't put it in here, but I would always recommend somewhere in your copy putting somewhere like, P.S., yes, if you can't attend live, I still encourage you to register because there will be a replay available 24 hours later. Okay, great. So Erin, I want to check in with you because I know yeah. we've covered a lot already, but yeah. like, how are how are you feeling and what additional support are you needing? Um, I feel way, like I feel like I have like an action list, like which for me, when I have a one step one, step two, step three, I get things done super quick. So I have that written down now so it, it can be done so simply. Um, I think just that was a big part of my you know, not even fear, just like the, what do I do next? So right, right. that's exciting, which once you start one action step, then it leads to others without even trying. So that's fantastic. Um, yeah. I'm think tomorrow I, I have now as I'm putting it on my list tomorrow, I want to start by um, creating my event right page and um, start working on my actual worksheet, the worksheet. Yeah, awesome. And I know that was listed as the next step was creating the the worksheet in Canva. And then, I mean, you kind of get to like reminding people about the workshop, which we've talked a little bit about. Um, but then I guess for me, jumping in at this point, like then it gets to the point of actually facilitating the workshop. So what comes up for you around that and any support you might need? Um, well, I think as we lead up to that, the more lives I do and the more present I am, um, I feel like I really want to share everybody like with everybody that this is my first time and these are steps so you can do it too. This is my up and my down days or whatever um, until we get up to the, you know, the event. Um, and I think that definitely just, you know, every time if you see something, share it um, that I post like that, I think would be super helpful. So it sounds like asking other people for support to share what you're putting out there too. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. What, what kind of ideas do you have? So I know it's something that um, I don't know that we included so much in this one. We talked about it in our workshop yesterday uh, was any kind of bonuses or like bring a friend bonus or anything like that. Have you Ooh. thought about any of that? No. And that's a great idea. <laughs> Right. Because especially like if you want people to share your content all over the place, if they end up bringing a friend or a friend signs up or something. And I think you can include maybe in your uh, you can include in your copy, but you can also do it probably on Eventbrite, like to put a field in there about 
were you referred by somebody? Okay. And then you could figure out how to do a kickback to that person based sure. on a referral. So just, just a thought if it makes sense for you. Yeah, like maybe a, a free card reading, virtual card reading online yeah. for everybody you refer. Would yeah. that work? Like, would that well, be whatever good? you want would work. <laughs> That's up to you on what you want to create. That would be fun. That yeah. would be, I think that would be great to like give that to more people and, you know, just show what I do. Um, and that's something that I love doing and I'm willing to give away. Obviously, I, w I want to do a whole free workshop on that. So, right. um, yeah. That's well, fun. and it's like Krista said, people love free shit, right? Yeah, they and, do. And especially if that's another workshop that you're going to be doing soon. And I'm going to kick it back over to Krista yeah, to talk about like your that'll be after. You're right. marketing during the event is that's part of your sales funnel too, right? Is to talk to people about that. Um, but while you're in the session, when you're, when you're teaching this or when you're with the people, what questions do you have that might come up around how to do that or how to facilitate any of it? Um, as far as the, as manifesting or what we mean, like what you're teaching, how you facilitate the discussion, what you're teaching, all of that, like what questions do you have about leading the actual workshop? Um, I don't have any questions yet. I think it's, I'm going to have to sit down and write out exactly how I want it to go. And then I'll probably have a buttload of questions. Cool. Of, are these all the ones I should use or should I use this or where does this mm. go? And, you know, so I think a follow up is going to be before I do my call is probably going to be super, would be really helpful. Awesome. Actually, now that I think about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That down. And so I was, you know, a coach trainer for a while and leading, you know, group programs, there's a million different things going on in your brain. Like by the, at the end of the two hours, Erin, your brain is going to probably be mush. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because like, and, and this is kind of what the question Monica was asking is like, you have to keep track of the time, right? You want to be really respectful that you're not starting late. You're not going over that. If you do have agenda, you're staying true to the agenda. You're going to have people asking questions in the chat box. So something I recommend is having an assistant or, I mean, for Monica and I, it's for two people. We switch off on that. If, if one person's talking, the other person's managing the chat box. Okay. Um, if you're leading it by yourself, yeah, maybe you can have an assistant. And it's just nice to have, because you're going to be getting all kinds of comments and you don't want to miss anything. Okay. Because, right, people want to be heard, seen, and acknowledged. Yes. So, like, there's that. And then you have to decide, like, you know, are you going to bring people on to video or are you going to have people just stay in the chat box? And then what if questions come up while you're talking in the first hour? Are you going to save them till the end? There, there's a lot of things that you don't realize until you get into the space and you're like, uh oh, I didn't. <laughs> <for this. laughs> it, it, it's kind of like when you gave your speech in Florida at the retreat, and then all of a sudden these things start popping up, and you're like, "Oh shoot, I didn't, I didn't really realize this, or I didn't know what to expect." So, like Monica, and this is definitely Monica's zone of genius is facilitating and leading events. There is, you're wearing so many different hats and roles as the leader and you have to you know not only are you presenting the material to people but you also have to make sure people are engaged you have to teach them how to show up to the event right so maybe yeah. monica what i think might be a little bit useful is maybe just to do a little bit of a tutorial of like maybe the top th three things you think could be most useful for aaron with leading her event that she could keep in mind or something. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty basic, honestly. Number one would be tell people how to interact with you in the session. If you don't want questions until after the first hour, tell them that up front. Reminding people to mute themselves or that you will mute them when they're not speaking is really important to put their questions in the chat. Like you just have to tell people how to interact with you during that time. Even if you tell them, um, I'm gonna be asking you questions and I'm gonna be directing you to the chat. So be sure that you, you know, drop your thoughts in. You can just explain to them how you expect them to interact because not everyone's been on virtual trainings before or virtual workshops. And it's 
totally okay to set expectations. I mean, we do this in training classes all the time. Like, hey, I'm not going to give a break. If you need to go take care of yourself, go do your damn thing. Like, you don't have to tell me that you're leaving. You know, it's the same thing that you would do in a, a physical space. Um, just setting the stage because adults want to know how to do the thing. They want to know how to show up. They want to know what's coming. Um, so it's just like with, with your speeches, right? Tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them. Yes. Um, and even if you're teaching, so yes, it is good to have another person there with you. If it is just you, you, for me, what I found with virtual training is as long as you are verbalizing what you're doing, people can accommodate. So for example, everyone give me just a minute. I'm going to pause and take a look at what's in the chat box and respond to any of your questions, right? Just tell people what you're doing and you give yourself a break. It's totally fine. If you have to pee in the middle of it and you take a break, just tell people like, don't torture yourself, you know? Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, really, I mean, honestly, for now, since you're not in the nitty gritty of it, I don't want to give you too much to kind of play with yet. I guess the only other thing is you have way more content than you need. So like whatever you have, probably cut it in half. Okay. I'm just going to tell you that now because um, Krista and I were talking like she did a, an outline. It was beautiful for our workshop yesterday. And I was like, Okay, this is six hours of content right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, two hour session. How do we make it work in two? But the good thing that I always tell people is if you have six hours of content, that's amazing. Guess what? You have like three more workshops that you can just build, and yes. people know you by then and they will come back and they're like, oh, oh I want to know this part. So now I'm going to come back and see Aaron again because I've got the first part. Now I want to do the next, or they can get on a call to talk to you further and it becomes more of a funnel for you to get people into all of your next options. Okay. So what, what, anything, what has come up for you with all of that? Um, that feels really comfortable. Cool. Um, I guess I'm kind of a person who's, I'm always ready for the unexpected. Mm -hmm. It's no big deal. Um, and I don't feel like this is anything I'm, I'm going to be talking about manifesting. So I really shouldn't be stressed out. <laughs> I trust the universe. So I feel, um, I feel super good about this. And, um, as you're saying, like, you know, cutting my content in my head, I'm like, cut that, cut that. Like just, just talk about this one thing. Just make it about this one thing. <laughs> well, but yeah, I, I get it what you're saying. And I can for hours too. So. One additional thing to that. So I know early you, earlier you had said it's mostly informational. It is very, very useful when you are giving a lot of information to ask questions to people during it, especially yeah. in a virtual setting. So like if you give some information to them being like, okay, based on what I just said, you know, and coming up with something that works, like what's the one thing you want to manifest right now? Type it in the chat. Right. Little things like that allow for engagement, but still allow for you to get your content out there in the way you want. And it's minimally invasive when you go to use this recording for something like people aren't going to see what people put in the chat. It's okay to have that engagement. It's actually, in fact, better than to just talk like for an hour and then be yeah. like, okay, that was a lot. Like now what, you know, or what questions? There's my lecture. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Got I am an anti-lecture girl. You can ask anyone who worked with me in the training world. I'd be like too much, too much lecture, too much stop mm -hmm. talking, right? Because people want to be involved with what you're doing and what you're saying. And so you have to invite that. You have to tell them how to be involved and engage with you. And that way they at least feel hurt, just like coaching. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I want to do another share screen, Aaron, and I want to show you how we have our notes set up with the flow of leading the workshops. And this might give you a little bit more inspiration too. And I have some ideas of like how you could organize your content for the manifesting. Because again, yeah, like Monica is saying, we have to be really careful we don't information overload people. Um, people's brains can only take, I, I know we have so much cool knowledge we want to share, but at the end of the day, people can only absorb so much. And well, so we sell ourselves short too by giving them everything the first time, honestly. That's, that's true. It's not a good marketing scheme to, as, as Jessica Riverson says, like, you don't want to give people the main entree, especially with these lower end offerings. You want to give them like the appetizer mm -hmm. and, and then we can talk about how to 
you know, what the call to action would be at the, for the main entree. Right. Okay. But so Monica and I always, and I would recommend for you to do this as well, Aaron, is to do like a Google doc or to write down somewhere and to outline kind of like with your speech, outline the flow ahead of time. So we have here, we always introduce ourselves and, and share a little bit of our story. So that's where Aaron, you can talk about, you know, who you are, why are you the expert to talk about manifesting to them and then share that story that you shared with us about how manifesting has really like just greatly improved your life. Okay. And then also talk about, you know, what is it that you want them to get out of this workshop today? Okay. And Monica, this is a little bit more that my brain, this uh, Monica loves the breakdown and the details and the execution. So I'm so grateful she does this. She like goes here. I, I think of like all the topics and then she breaks it down into time and minutes, which is like just way too much for my brain. But <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's an advanced step right there. Small note on that. If you do like to do that, or you start putting approximate times on there, always make sure that you only have three quarters of the amount of time that you have allotted. So if it's a 60 minute session, you only need to have 45 minutes planned because okay. you want that 15 minute buffer to be able to, because you're going to go over, especially the first time and people's questions are going to come up. You want to be able to attend to that because the worst thing you can do is like ignore people. And I don't mean ignore people, but I mean like be like trying to rush through their questions. Like, does that make sense? Okay. Moving on, you know, like trying to rush them through that process. Yes. So Aaron, you're going to have this first part. You're going to introduce yourself, share your story. And then this next part, teach them, you know, how to show up in the online classroom here. So this is basically like where you're giving them the rules. And then let's see. And then we start asking, you know, what kind of coach are you? Where in the world are you from? Like we, we get these engagement questions going so we can get them participating. And then this is where we start to go into our content. So you could have like, I would recommend maybe choose three, the three top topics or bullet points that you think are the most important to teach people an introduction to manifesting. And so you could have, you know, bullet point one, bullet point two, bullet point three, and that's how you keep it nice and organized. Okay. And then this is just going through all of our content here. Okay. And then this is at the, we have our last hour for the Q&A and coaching. We only did 30 minutes, but we're going to probably extend our next workshop to be longer because this was the, the part that people love most. And then we had our call to action here. So uh, we, you know, people are always wondering what's the next step after you know you just told them all these different ways to manifest so now they're like now what so you need to have some sort of invitation or call to action and what we do let me show you our worksheet is we always we literally tell them ready for the next step and we all open up like assessment calls and that's what you signed up for aaron mm -hmm. And we tell people, you know, we invite people to sign up and, and people usually do it while they're right there on the call with us. And then this is such a great opportunity to help them with, you know, anything additional that they feel like they didn't get addressed during the workshop. And then it can also turn into a sales call as well. And we address that here. You know, we say, and if you want our help and we both feel it's a fit, you'll receive a personal invitation to join us in our speaker space program. So it kind of serves two purposes to do these assessment calls. It's to continue building the relationship and give value after the workshop. And it's also kind of like a little interview to see, you know, would it be a good fit to continue working together one-on-one -on -one or to invite them into your next paid offering? Right. And then we have people fill out surveys after that, because what we found is if you let, if you tell people to fill out a survey after they leave, most people don't do it. And surveys are really valuable to find out how the workshop went and to use them as testimonial. And then this is the part where we do the drawing. Again, always save the drawing or the giveaway to the end because people will definitely, 
If you don't, people are going to leave early. Okay. So that's pretty much all I have on my end. And I have a discovery call coming up in seven minutes. Is it Monica or Aaron? Did any of you want to add anything before we wrap this up today? Aaron, what are, how are you feeling right now? I was just like, I got work to do. <laughs> I got stuff to do now. I feel like oh, I'm so excited. I, I have mm. stuff to do <laughs> instead of just thinking it up and planning it up and, you know, waiting. So <laughs> what's the next thing you're committed to doing to make your workshop happen? Um, is, there's two things. So tomorrow um, I'm going to do a Facebook live video and I'm also going to set up my event, right? Actually three things, because I'm going to set up my event, right? I want to talk about it on Facebook, tell people about how I'm doing it, why I'm doing this and putting myself out there. And then there was one more thing, not just that it wasn't, I wrote it down to, what was the other thing? Um, oh, and start working on my worksheet. <laughs> yeah. So okay, three things, so, three, I got three things to start doing tomorrow. I'm excited about. So starting tomorrow, you're going to do a Facebook live to talk about it. You're going to start your worksheet. And you're going to create your event, right? Yes. Awesome. How are you going to celebrate when those are done? Um, let's see. Joy I'm, coach. Not tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how I want to celebrate. Mm. What do you suggest? What would feel good for you to celebrate getting that stuff done? Um, probably time with my girls. Def it. Actually, no, not definitely time with my girls. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Spend, so, spend some baby time. I love it. I love it. So spend some time with your girls when you do those. Awesome. And we can't wait to tag us on your uh, Facebook live and everything, you know, anywhere you want to, we love to go in and show you some support too, but thank you. Thank you so much for um, giving us the time today and letting us work through this with you. Thank you. Thank you and so for much for giving me your time. I'm so grateful is always so blessed. Definitely. And Krista, did you want to tell people what their next steps are with us? Definitely. Yeah. So again, thank you everyone for watching. I hope that this was helpful for you. If you feel called to start doing virtual workshops, we say do it ASAP. People need your, your gifts and your expertise and your coaching and your mentoring right now, not someday, not next year, right now. So um, we have these monthly workshops every month. We'll have another one next month. We don't have the topic and date picked out, but we'll keep you all updated. So keep following Monica and I on our personal pages. We also have a business page, Fearless Public Speaking, and a website soon to come. And we'll keep you updated with when this next workshop is. We want you to be a part of it because we really, we really give you everything we've got. We make sure that we create these beautiful worksheets for you so it's easy Actual, as you could see with Erin today, now she's leaving with more confidence and a plan of like, okay, now I know actually how to make this happen. I have a way where I can start serving my audience and start making money. And that's to me the most amazing feeling in the world. And that's what we love to do for our clients. When it builds your momentum too. And also just stay tuned over this next week. Be watching me and Krista's page because we've got some other awesome promotions that are going to be coming up about our speaker space program that starts on March 5th. So keep an eye out because we're like doing ridiculous things to make it reasonable for amazing women who want to yeah. be in community with us to join. So Stay tuned. Not only amazing women, business owners with a message who are ready to find their voice, reach millions, and make an impact. Exactly. Amen. <laughs> All right, everybody. Have an awesome day. I know Chris is going to need a bathroom break before her next call. So <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Chris is, is it seven months pregnant now. Yeah. Seven months pregnant. So we're going to be nice to mama and give her a break. So everybody have a great day and a great weekend. And thank you, Erin. Bye. Bye.